Hey guys, I wanted to let you know about a Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament that's going to be happening on November 20th online that me and Lights Out will essentially be hosting. It's going to have a $2,000 prize pool and signups are actually going to go live this Friday. So make sure you keep an eye out in the community tab of my YouTube as well as some tweets that'll be happening with that sign up link. Also, for those of you interested, we're gonna have a tournament on the 21st as well. That's gonna be for Fortnite. I think you guys might be pretty excited about that. And guess what? Another $2,000 prize. And then of course, on the Wednesday, that's gonna be November 22nd, we'll be doing a League of Legends tournament. And you guessed it, another $2,000 prize pool. So if any of those tournaments interest you, I encourage you to sign up. And no, I will be streaming the Smash Brothers tournament on Monday, November 20th. $2,000 prize pool. Hope to see you all there. L -l 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 Ladies and gentlemen, episode 33 of Lights Out is here. Uh, no longer powered by Metify, by the way, despite what the intro may say, because I haven't had, had a new one made yet. But uh, we are actually going to be switching our bonus content over to a Patreon that we are going to be uh, creating very shortly. So if you guys this like is that news kind of to me. OK, you were in the group chat. Uh, Wait, when did this happen? <laughs> shut the hell up. I'm doing the intro. <laughs> um, so aside from what that Jim said, hey, we always want to remind you too. you want to help your boys get into the algorithm more. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We just passed 65,000. That's pretty awesome. You can also do us a favor by commenting and liking the videos as well. It does a lot for us. And five star ratings on Spotify is big news. But as much as I like to toot my own horn, I can't ever do it alone. I got two other tutors with me, Cosmos and Light. What's up, my boys? Well, now that I know about the Metafy thing, you're going to have to do it alone. I quit. No, I'm kidding. OD. Damn. <laughs> I needed that. No, but um, I'm doing pretty good. You know, just getting back from Miami, coming back from getting washed. You yeah, know, you bit. feel me? You feel me getting washed? Oh, hey, that's on. the boy. What's up? Hi. I just washed him. I just folded I just him like pancakes. Him. He said, he, no, you did both not. said you just washed each other. I, he looks like he's about to go out. You need to shower, you stinky Damn, ass. He is about to go out. Stinky ass. Anyways, he looks like he just got doesn't smell. from high school. That's, That's what you always say. You right? beat the allegations. Yeah. <laughs> With the backpack. <laughs> did I tell you to get out of your school clothes? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I got washed at that tournament. But honestly, I don't feel bad about it at all. I know that come, might come off a little cosmos. But I mean, I got to. <laughs> wow. Well, let's at least go five minutes without me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, it gets earlier every single pod. I'm sorry. It wasn't me. <laughs> okay. But before we go on anything, let me tell you why I got washed at Let's Make Moves Miami. You know? Because there's a reason. Wait, wait, uh, lost wait. My rival. That's crazy. Wait, like, can I, can I give my theory behind it? Because I did give a theory. I'm my rival. <laughs> rival. <laughs> All right, go on. Go I want to give you, I want to give you my theory. I said it was because it was Halloween weekend and he probably went out Saturday and was just really hungover I, on I Sunday. I literally saw your Instagram story. You had like a fucking story about you on the beach at 4 a.m. He was not really locked in that tournament. <laughs> what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> Explain yourself, like. <laughs> okay, I don't usually do this. I'm very, and you guys can attest to this, I'm very focused on tournaments. I don't go to tournaments and try to lose. I try to win every single tournament as hard as I can. That being said, I had a couple of my friends from New York. Shout outs to Player 4, Raptor, Jen, and Ranger, if you guys know who that is. Uh, I went out with them to South Beach, Miami. And we, fun fact, bars in Miami don't close till 6 a.m. That's so, true, yeah. So, you know, I said, fuck it. I just wanted to have a good night because, you know, I don't do that often. It was Halloween weekend. And I was a little bummed about leaving Salem on Halloween weekend because this is the Halloween town. So went to Miami. I partied a lot. Got back home like at 7 a.m. Went to bed like at 8 or 9. And, you know, I still got good hours of sleep. But, like, I had a lot of, you know, alcohol in my system. So when I played web let's get this out of the way web is a very good player i know web is a good player i've seen him play before there was no way i was gonna beat him like that bro like there is no shot that i was gonna beat web playing like that apollo kage i think i could have beaten 
But I don't care what anyone's calls a John or not. Is that who you were calling my rival? Was it Weber? Yeah, because Apollokage was like, your rival, bro. Who, who the fuck is creating this storyline now? Yeah. <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> no, bro. But um, I, yeah, I don't fucking know, man. I The fake ass straw hat. I heard he even watch One Piece, all of it. But, uh, no, no, but um, yeah, I played him. And I honestly think I could have beat him playing like that. But... I, I couldn't hear the game. There was no audio on the setups, and I kind of forgot. Like going into the set, I kind of forgot how important audio was versus Snake. And given yeah, after, important. yeah, but like it just, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. Clearly, I was not in the right headspace, right? And then game one happened. I started dying to like C four, and I'm like, I fucked Let up. Hear it. <laughs> yeah, and then no, like I literally fucked up. And then game three came. And before game three started, he was like, do you want to like go grab earbuds or something? Which I respect him for saying that, by the way, he didn't have to say that. He's like, do you want to like pause the set and get earbuds? But like, I was as strong as my rival. (laughs) (laughs) But I I was already, I was already down 2-0 and I was already like salty. So I was like, no, I don't want to fucking get headphones. Like it's too late, bro. Like I'm down 2-0 versus snake. I don't want to get headphones, bro. I'm pissed already. You know, I was admittedly salty after that, you know? So I took my L. I played him in Money Watch just later. Uh, and the Money Watch shows were very good. I took most of them. He took two after I already, like, I after I beat him twice. But, like, I, I you know what I do, Cosmos. I have to go reassure myself that I can whoop that ass. So I, w- so I went to Money Match him later. And I he does that every was, tournament. Yeah, and I, f- I fucked him up for the most part. And I felt good about that, you know? So I don't really feel bad about my tournament run. Usually I would. You know, I'm very hard on myself when I lose. But, I mean, this wasn't, like, I, I've been playing very well lately. I, I even played, like, the moment I got off my flight, when like, when I landed on, on Monday. Like, I don't feel bad. I just feel like it was just an irresponsible decision. I don't feel like I need to get better. I played friendlies with a lot of people. Uh, I played friendlies with Spargo. I was watching Spargo. I was watching everyone I played this weekend. Like, I actually don't feel bad about my, my result. I just know I had a good time. I pulled a mango, bro. You got to do it every once in a while. <laughs> That's I mean, it. That's it. If, yeah. if Mango did what I did, they would have been like fucking raw 25th. Gut, gut, gut. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, all right. Nah, You're I'm not wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, Wait until we get Mango on the pod, I'll really? make it happen. But yeah, that was my weekend. Honestly, I had a good time. I, I don't regret it. I'd probably do it again. I'll be focused up for port. I would hope so. And now, um, and shout outs to WebJP for. Uh, he got ninth at that event, which uh very good. You guys know Webb is actually qualified for Watch the Throne as well. Um, and I noticed that Webb, like, he's kind of the lights out slayer. He took out my boy Cosmos at Super Smash Con, took out my boy Light. When I was handicapped. Yeah, yeah, but still took out Light when he was, you know, hung over or whatever you want to call it. Handicapped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the only one left is me, and I'm not handicapped, I'm just bad. So I feel like, oh brother. <laughs> He's coming for all of us. This is crazy. Webb, if you could hear me, stop kicking a man while he's down. <laughs> <laughs> he's already dead. <laughs> no, but he, he is a very good player. I mean, he beat Nao, which, like I said, and admittedly, like I said, if I fought Webb at my best, I still think it'd be a hard time. He seemed yeah. pretty good at the matchup. He doesn't do seem think like a bad Webb player. Is really good. I, I do think Webb is really good. Um, I'm not surprised that he beat Nao because Nao truly believes. He says that Sheik Corn is like an 8-2 matchup. I'm like, I don't know what your ratios are, but it is a really bad matchup. <laughs> so I'm not surprised that he beat um, Nao. I am still surprised no matter how bad you were playing that he still ended up beating you because that matchup is horrible. You have a lot of experience in that matchup. Um, uh, yeah, but I will say the matchup isn't as bad as people think. It's just that the head representative of the character who is a streamer likes to bitch about the matchup. So, you know, <laughs> it's well, really not that it's really not that terrible from your perspective. Was there anything that Webb did differently than light or that, uh, than void that you can, like, yeah, uh, one of the, there's a lot more buttons in general though. Right. Do you think no, so? No, no. Uh, so when I played it, that's what, that's how I felt. Okay. So the way I feel about Webb is when I played him and of course this is me like relying on my autopilot. Cause I, I'm just trying to get by but my autopilot is not a bad autopilot. That's the thing. Like, it's not like a, a very super scrubby autopilot. My, But I will say my autopilot consists of a lot of multi-hits. Webb was very in his shield. Webb was very comfortable staying in his shield versus me. And usually I know how to deal with that. But since I just wasn't in a grabbing mood, I just couldn't deal with it. That was very good from him. He has this one habit that I'm not going to say because I'm going to exploit the fuck out of it next time I play him. But here's the thing. This habit was so bad 
that I didn't think he would keep doing it. And he did it every I single exactly time. How that feels, bro. He did it every single time, and I, it's like I thought it was in my head. And like by the time I realized it, it there was it, there was no way I was going to be able to capitalize on it. On top of that, I wasn't playing good enough to be able to capitalize it anyways. But I'm clocking in on that habit next time, and I know that habit's real because I talked to Zamba about it after, and he's like, "Yeah, I just punished this," and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, bro, oh no, I really fucked up. But uh, yeah, so I'm not going to say what it is. It's similar to like the, how I felt about Spargo or like, I'm not going to tell you guys what I found out. But yeah, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely fucking capitalizing on that next time. Regardless, he's a really good player. He plays very disciplined and that was very surprising to me. But I guess you have to play discipline when you play a character like Sheik. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, th- you know, this is the first tournament I watched in a really long time where I watched like pretty much from start to finish on the finals day, like top 64 to finish. I was there. Like I was locked in. I was, there's a couple of snoozers, you know what I mean? But that happens at every tournament. But there were like the majority of those matches where I thought were bangers uh, for sure. Uh, one thing I know a lot of people were excited about was Cola's return. Uh, I know some people were on the fence, like, yeah, he's going to come back and get, like, 33rd, 25th, something like that. I was like, nope. I don't know. Let it like, be I, known. I said it first. He had the chance to get the top eight. Yeah, you did. Uh, this I, podcast. I also called Light winning the tournament, though. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, one one for two ain't bad. Um, 25th is higher than one. It is, but it ain't higher than 13. <laughs> it is a bigger number. It ain't higher than 13. Shouts to Paulo Kage. All right. But- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, it is higher. What are you talking about? I you think did- I would have outplaced my rival? <laughs> No, I said it is higher or isn't. High. I don't remember. You just ruined the joke. Either way, Anyways. he outplaced you, but none of you outplaced Cola, who came back with a vengeance. This man finished in, according to my notes here, fifth place. Just and really, I mean, had a chance to go all the way, uh, maybe to winner's finals if he could, if he had been able to eke out that game against uh, Spargo, because they had a really classic, maybe the best set of the tournament, actually. But it was great to see Cola back, man. And, um, I think this is just going to be the start of just like a rejuvenation for him. And I'm really hoping now he'll be at port priority too. I think he'll be at port. Can you guys confirm? Do you, do you he know? will be at port priority. And I mean, I'm very happy he did good because I didn't do good, obviously. And I love seeing Moist do good in general. So yeah. seeing my Moist boy do that great is amazing. I was there every step of the way. I saw that tweet you made. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... I just want to like, it's just cool, man. I mean, I love Aaron and Goblin, but usually when like at the top level, like and top eights, it's usually that's Cola there with me when we get top eights together. So I'm very happy that uh, he did good. I'm obviously looking forward to more tournaments with him. He told me he's in a way better headspace now Good. where me and him could just get top eights together and we could be fighting each other like we should have this tournament. I'm very he's happy. He's not down that. 60,000. Yeah, he's actually, he's down more than that. <laughs> oh, sure. He's giving up. <laughs> yeah, he got to go back to Smash. Speaking of Sorties, Fire Emblem characters, Shattuck Woo. fucking got top three, was it? Top three. Shattuck finished four, in fourth top four. place. Top four, top four. Fourth yeah, place. he... Oh, yeah, he lost he the Almost buzz. beat yeah. the buzz. Yeah, he played very good. He's yeah. playing amazing lately. You know, it's crazy because I've seen Shattuck at like all these small tournaments that have been happening on the weekends and he's been top eighting them through loser side. And it's like, okay, Shattuck's doing good, but these tournaments are smaller. But then he just goes to let's make moves Miami and he fucks everyone up. Top eight through loser side. Yeah. Top eight through loser side. I mean, I know how that feels. That feels great. And I mean, he cleaned up on most of the people that he fought against yeah. and being in the VIP room, most people were scared to fight him. I know for a fact, Spargo was scared to fight him because uh, Shattuck really? was cleaning him in the VIP room. Yeah. And they, yeah, they played a good amount. I don't think Spargo likes Corrin. So, He's, yeah. Remember, he lost to a Corrin at, was it, it was, when did, he lost to a Corrin at SmashCon, right? Wasn't it Y? L- yeah, L-Y? L-Y. L-Y. Yeah. 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 He's like maybe the third or fourth best Corrin, so. Yeah, and I obviously Spargo can beat anybody, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it. The buzz is the reason Spargo won that tournament. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also like I mean I won't even say it's the buzz. It was it was Luma the reason why Spargo won that tournament because if if Shattuck literally focused Luma one single, he was playing amazingly against the buzz. 
like because I obviously have a lot of experience in that matchup too. I was seeing him like do everything right. He was like spacing everything correctly. He was juggling correctly, frame trapping correctly, less trapping correctly, edge guarding correctly. The only thing he was doing incorrectly is any time he would hit Rosa, he would just focus Rosa like ninety percent of the time. So, he did not focus Luma like once. So question on Shattuck, like because you know on my I, he beat or Spargo beat him earlier in the tournament. Do you think he wouldn't have been able to beat him again? I think I think he had a lot of momentum, okay. and I don't think that Spargo would just lose because Spargo is amazing. But Shattuck is a young kid, and young kids are some of the best kids with momentum. He plays There's better from losers, momentum. definitely. I mean, look at his run at yeah. Rise and Grind, Big House here. It's just he just I, kicks I it into that. another gear, and the buzz literally, I feel like, just barely s- skated by, skinning his teeth. Yeah, but Shattuck was bro, right there. The buzz ended that set so cleanly. He hit him with the double Luma air dodge attack into up smash. I was like, wow, you got hit by that twice, but it was still cool. <laughs> it was still really cool. I don't know how you got Only hit by that twice in a row. On you. <laughs> yeah. But Only like twice. the buzz was playing out of his mind. I'm very happy the buzz is like playing really good. I don't think the buzz thought he could beat Spargo. I don't know because he does not like fighting Spargo. But he hates that was, Spargo and Leo. Those are like yeah. the two players that he feels like like he runs into a wall whenever he mm-hmm. gets into those players. Yeah, bro. Honestly, that was the fastest set ever. I looked down on my phone and I looked back up and I was like, what? what <laughs> I was like, what's going on? What no, nah, what happened? Oh, my voice is gone from uh <laughs> from drinking water. But uh, <laughs> drinking water. <laughs> yeah. I thought I am on the beach. <laughs> yeah, after uh uh he lost though, you know, Margo had to go on to fight Sonic, so uh Phil, <laughs> I remember we have a guest, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to say, like, we're obviously we're going through a little bit of the tournament, too. But yes, the second placer of the event, my boy Sonics, is actually here. And we're going to chat with him uh, for a little while about his run and kind of where he sees uh, his place in the meta. So I'm going to add Sonics and we're going to bring his ass in. Join Jim. He's going to camp our podcast. I hope he does. Yes. <laughs> this is our first three hour podcast. Yeah. We'll talk <laughs> about, we're going to talk about tweaks run as well. We're going to, so I'm, I'm waiting to talk about tweaks run because it actually lines up with Sonics's run in my opinion. And you'll see what really? I mean when he gets in here. I'm yeah. curious what you mean by that too, because yeah. his run was definitely very interesting. Mm, a thousand percent. Who's Sonics or tweaks? Tweaks. Oh, what's yeah, I mean, I hope yeah. so. He, now, there's a he, lot he of good placings too. Mute, Mute Ace got fifth place. Mute Ace wasn't even going to enter the tournament because he rerouted his controller scheme. So he was saying he felt like he was only playing at like 60% or whatever. Well, that 60% took his ass to fifth place. So, yeah, but like Mute Ace has been doing that thing where on Twitter he posts like twice a day where he's like, day, give it up for day 15 of, of Mute Ace nonstop training. And he's like doing zero to death combos. So I don't know, man. No, uh, he might be capping. Oh, yeah. You know who's not capping? The you know screen. who's not capping? The screen that's the screen. loading. It's loading. No, on. Someone is definitely capping. Someone is capping, bro. What is going on? And it's Sonic. He's capping. You can't Captain just spin ben dash the loading screen, oh, bro. Yo, wait. Time out. What a fire hey. profile picture. Hold up. That profile picture is fire. What? Yeah, the, the stitch. That is sick. Wait. I'm jealous. Hold on. Silence. Sonics. Talk. Okay, oh, we, we can't, can't we, we can't, can't hear, hear you. you. We can't hear you. Oh, nope, nope, nah, nope, not yet, not yet. Hold on, technical difficulty. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. We're not used to technical screen. difficulties. Hold up, I'm camping. I have I have Cosmos on my stream. I'm used to technical difficulties. All right, don't worry about it. Uh, when was the last time I had a technical difficulty? You're Come a on. liability. Not anymore. I've been on time all the time. I have a look at my room. I got posters in my room. A microphone. It is Bro, clean. Can, yeah, can we talk about that real quick? I thought of that the first second I entered the call. I was like, why the fuck do you have posters up? You live in America. Just move already, bro. <laughs> yeah, he ain't move. coming back, bro. <laughs> Just move already. I'll see you at part, bro. Oh my god, just get out of my country. Can you You're bring not me a I'm, I'm, I'm not in your country right now. But yeah, it was so funny. I was talking to Cola and he's like, I'm just a fucking diehard patriot. I'm like, me too. Cola and said that? that? Yeah, he's a patriot, bro. I respect it. Yeah, me too, man. Let's go, America. I respect the hell out of that. Okay. America. Hey. Nah, you can't you can't say that. You're you're like Japa Mexican. I don't know. <laughs> I'm from Mexican. I don't know uh, what you are. I don't know if you should say that. 
<laughs> the only thing you're not for sure. Before you can go, let's just stop it here. We're Sonics. Uh, I know. I know the only thing you're not, and that's French. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. no. That's you. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Oh my God. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Shut up. Silence. Oh, wow. Silenzo. Silenzo. Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. How did? How long ago did you get home? I got. Uh, so I'm I'm in Vegas right now. Uh, oh, cool. I got here like Monday, 4 p.m. I've been chilling. Where do you stay when you go to Vegas? Because you do that pretty often, right? He stays at his girl's yeah. house. What? Look yeah, at his yeah, pillows. Yeah, yeah. Bro, exactly. okay. Yeah, like this, this is not me, bro. This is not me. Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, your girl got a sick setup, and I'm not going to lie. I thought she lived in DR. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. No, nah, no. Nah, she lives in Vegas. So that that's why. That's the main reason why I haven't come here in the first place. So when I do, I like, I'll just stay in her place. Yeah. Good Why job. are you trying to make her setup look like it was like like some that's a sick setup. It is. I know. I mean she just likes it. There yeah, you man. go. It's all her. I like that. Her, now, Sonics, thank you for joining short notice by the way. I appreciate that. Um I I got to say, bro, so I wanted to ask you this because I felt like your run and Tweak's run, the reason I was saying that I felt like you had similar obstacles is because obviously you're representing Luminosity right now. You had to get down there the same time as Tweak, right? You had to get down there on a Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, right? So you had to get down there on a Tuesday, so it's a travel day, do content Wednesday, Thursday into the tournament, which started on Friday, okay? Now, from Tweak's perspective, I can know because I, I was with him for the two of the days. I know he was miserable just because he was exhausted, right? It was a lot of stuff you had to film. There's a lot of stuff you had to do, a lot of moving pieces. The, the place we were filming was an hour away from the actual tournament venue. It was a lot of things going on, right? Um, and he ended up finishing in ninth place, just one shy of being able to get top eight, losing to both the Buzz and Zomba, fellow Tri-State members. You yourself, though, you took it all the way to second place, okay? As well as, you know, being in the winner's side of Grands, which was really impressive. How did you, like, overcome all that exhaustion to have that placement because I thought for sure, like y'all were gonna be just tr straight up drained, but you just kept on chugging through, bro. Explain to break that down for me. <laughs> I got you. Uh, so what happened was, let me know if the volume's fine. By the you're way, you're good. I can turn it up and I'll try. Cool. Um, I just stayed well hydrated and well fed, honestly, and I also slept well. Like I just, I took good care of myself. Mm -hmm. That's it, really. Uh, most masters can't really say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like that. That's uh, mainly due to the fact that. So I flew out my coach Tony over there. Shout out to Tony, by the way. Uh, and he was making sure that I was like well fed, uh, well hydrated, all that stuff. And he like he would always remind me like, "Yo, eat this, eat that, drink water, go to the bathroom, do this, meditate, do that." So he would just always like, uh, on top and just telling me like, "Hey, do these things." Like if you wanna, he was telling me like. Uh, this is something that he said he was, uh, he told me, if you want to be professional, you got to do things professionally. Oh, that's and a so, bar. That's, you yeah, I, I, that's basically it. Like, to me, I did not feel tired at all. Matter of fact, I could have still kept playing on Sunday. I, I was ready to just go. Damn. On like, Spargo, on set that. four right now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Dude, the craziest thing, too, is like, I think it was that. Wednesday, you were in Coinbox, right? So you played online till like 2 a.m. And by the way, I hope you compensated that venue owner keeping his ass up that late. Okay, I'm gonna just tell you that right now. 2 a.m. <laughs> okay, 2 a.m. at the venue playing a Coinbox online. Then you won the pre-local the next day. So you had already like just two Damn. like long and stressful tournaments, and then you still played this weekend too. And you didn't place outside of the top two at any of those events. That's nuts. Like I don't think people realize how draining that is to have that level of consistency, bro. Dude, yeah, I know. I mean, like, to me, at this point, it's whatever. But when I first started doing this, like, these uh, marathon-like runs, so when I would just, like, play coin box and then go to a tournament or go to, like, it was a point in time where going to two pre-locals, or two locals, rather, a week to me was exhausting because I'd mm -hmm. be like, dude, like, I'm just so tired. But as I did, as I did it more, I grew, I got more experience. I uh, grew stamina. I, yeah, I grew stamina, and I just I just got better at it. And like now, it just feels like I'm playing Wi-Fi to me. Like I'm just I, I've gotten to the point where 
majors and just any type of tournament to me just feels like I'm playing Wi-Fi at the comfort of my own home. Damn, that's crazy. That's that's insane. I don't think many people can really say that because that's a very powerful like <clears throat> that's a powerful point to get to where you can actually I feel like that's something that most competitors want to feel like, like they're feeling like they're just playing in the comfort of their home, their own home or like basically feeling like they're kind of practicing. Like it might not really feel like practice because obviously tournaments always different, but feeling like you're and like you're basically in your zone because obviously when you're playing at home you're basically in your zone like if you can feel like that all the time that's that's incredible that's incredible to hear yeah why are you writing this down i don't need to (laughs) i know exactly how this feels actually i mean there was definitely a point in my life where i was going to tournaments every week because before i moved to massachusetts i was going to all my weeklies which i'll be doing again in less than a month so that feels great um and that's why i was so good last year like i was Going to weeklies all the time. I went to my all my monthlies and then I still go to majors. Me personally, I feel like when I play the game a lot, I don't actually get exhaustion either. Like my exhaustion, my my exhaustion comes from like if my actual life sucks. Cause like if my actual life sucks, then I just get very stressed out about the game. Cause like then I'll be like, oh, like this sucks too. And then everything's just falling apart. That's when I need a break. But like when I'm playing Smash like consistently, going to tournaments, I I can relate saying like it feels like I'm just playing at home because I just don't I'm playing the game so much that it just feels like I don't really have a reason to be nervous. You know, my nerves only really come from when I don't put the effort in, you know, I've never I don't usually feel nervous if I know I put the effort in because I put the effort and I feel like I deserve to win. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of it is like that still ties into like basically like Sonic says doing things like if, if you want to be a professional you have to do things professionally yeah like take taking care of your own like life situation like just your entire life in general is basically doing things pro- professionally as well as like having a routine around like how you play when you play and things like that and like what you do before you play while you're playing and after you're playing and like making sure that you take that to tournaments as well so that you also feel like that's what makes it feel like you're at home whenever you're going through like your r- routine and everything listen yeah. all very inspirational stuff accurate stuff Let's get down to the meat of the shit, okay? <laughs> I need to know, looking at you, Sonics, what is it going to take for you to get over the Spargo hump? Because every time, you're right there, but you don't close it out, okay? And it's not because you're choking. That's not what's happening at all. You're just outplaying you no, a little bit. Sometimes just want, it is. No, uh, sometimes well, maybe it is sometimes. Maybe it is sometimes. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but him being like this, where it needs to be a step ahead sometimes. How do you overcome spargo i think that i just need to get out of my own head honestly it's like i know what he's going for i know what he's doing i know how to punish it but you do it you can tell like if you look at the for example literally just you can take grants as an example yeah the games that i won were all very convincingly in those games i was just flowing like i was not thinking about anything i was just flowing i almost made a reverse uh 3-0 as well uh but then like when i'm right there i just get in my own head and i'm like shit what could go wrong? Like literally game 10, I don't know if you guys remember, um, but I started the match off with like a literal zero to death. Yes. And I, re- I, I read the fuck out of him. Like I, I just ran up and I'm like forward smash because I knew he was going to jump. And then I killed him and I could, I, I could see from the corner of my eye that he was frustrated. So I was like, okay, I got him. And then all the intrusive thoughts came in and they were like, what if you choke though? What if, <laughs> what if you start missing shit? What if you, what if he adapts? Are your intrusive started- voices in Spanish or in English? in english okay so that's that's a good question (laughs) they're bilingual they buy they're bilingual (laughs) what have you made on (laughs) Uh, literally uh but yeah so it's mostly a mental thing for sure now that being said i can still be better in like certain aspects of what i'm doing because at the end of the day no matter how mentally frustrated i am if i am like polished to the point where i just don't miss Certain things, like, it doesn't matter how frustrated I am, I'll still get those things, no matter what. Uh, But it's mostly that. Like, I'm telling you, like, literally, as soon as I took the stock, guys, as soon as I took that stock, I just started thinking, what if, like, don't choke. Like, okay, you're here. Two more stocks. Just do this shit. Don't choke. And I just started thinking, like, oh, fuck. The venue's loud. The crowd's loud. The commenters are going crazy. Like, I started thinking about everything but the game. Mm. And then you can tell, because I started to slow down. So normally, like, yeah... I play slow sometimes. Sometimes I play fast. Against Spargo, though, normally I don't play slow. But if I slow down against Spargo, it means I'm my own head, and I'm, like, trying to get mm. out of it. 
Yeah. And that that's that's mainly what happened towards the end. Uh but as a whole though, I think that I just need to stop also stop like overestimate nah overestimating him. Cause sometimes like there'll there'll be times, and it's something that happens with light too. There'll be times where I like I'll have a setup written down or something, like, okay, I know he's gonna normally go for this option and, and like I'll punish it. I'll go for it, I punish him for it. I'm like, yeah, okay, easy. But then in my head, I'm like, oh. They're top players. Like they're gonna adapt. They're gonna pick a different option. Not always. And then they don't. <laughs> and then they don't. And I'm just like, not always. Yeah, but like, let's say for example, in Spargo's case, I killed him the same time in a row, like four times, like four times in a row in the same situation. He picked the same option. So I'm like, okay, the fifth time, I'm gonna choose something different, right? And then he does it, and I'm just like, either this guy is insanely good or just <laughs> dumb as hell, because no way. And so like. <laughs> I'm just so it's it's like a mental thing, really. But I think that once I'm able to get through that, which I'm already working towards, of course, I think that I'll just be able to just win consistently. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it really is just like one of those mental barrier things. I know you've beaten him like you actually took a tournament over him at was it Gommel? Yeah, it was Gommel. Yeah, but it might just take one more for you where you got to put yourself in that position. Like once you actually take one more tournament over him specifically, you're like, okay, I'm probably never gonna have to worry about this mentally again. Where like it's just not a mental block thing, you know? Because some yeah. people you simply just can't beat because of a mental block, even if you feel like your league's above them, you know? Or you yeah. could do things that they can't do. So maybe for you, it just takes one more tournament over them just to like put that in your mind. Yeah. No, for sure. And I mean, it's that. And also, uh, historically speaking, I always struggle against Spargo, like coming from losers. Or it, it's so we fight in coin box like all the time. And usually yeah. how, the way things go is whoever goes, whoever gets to grand and winners is the one that loses, funnily enough. Damn. So like, yeah, literally like consistently, bro. Every time, every time. Do you feel so, like it's like a momentum thing of people like growing momentum through losers or is it just like a... Like I a think it's thing? a, I think it's a combination of the, the fact because Spargo, like he powers the fuck up in losers, same way I do. Uh, but he just starts playing like really fucking fast uh, when coming through losers. And so... Like, for example, this coin box, same shit happened. Literally the exact same shit. Uh, I won 3 1 in winners' finals. And then in grants, I got th- I did get 3 0 set 1, and then set 2 was 3 2. Uh, but it was the same thing. And it's a matter of uh, the mental part of it, I think, is the fact that because he's coming from losers and I beat him a certain way, like exploiting very like thick habits, very clear habits, I think to myself, oh, he's going to adapt, right? Because it's a new set. Like, he's had time to think about it. He's going to adapt. And he does adapt. Like, don't get me wrong. But I, I overestimate how much he's adapting, though. Yeah. And so it takes me. Yeah. And then that's why, like, usually the second set of grands is a lot more close, is a lot closer or is just a lot better for me because I'm like, OK, he didn't adapt. Like, this is what it is. And this is just how I'm going to punish him. And that's it. Is there a world where he can beat you with cloud or is it always going to do you think he's always going to use Aegis? Is there a world where you think cloud could ever come out? Uh, I don't he tried Cloud so. at, at Genesis, right? And at he Genesis. got washed. So yeah. I think there's a world where he could do well from you from Cloud, but I think he's like mentally scarred. <laughs> 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 like, I don't think that, like, I obviously think you could beat his Cloud. I think you guys could beat each other, but I think he's just so like, I think he just doesn't believe in his ability to like win on stage enough for like, to, for it to compensate for the offstage gameplay, you know? Yeah. Whereas yeah. with Aegis, he feels like he can. But I'm not gonna lie. In my opinion, you know his his recoveries with Aegis are like ten times more predictable than his Cloud pr- recoveries, bro. Like oh, they yeah. look so they look so predictable every time I watch you play him, and I'm like, damn, he deserves to lose <laughs> so bad. <laughs> like that is generally how I also feel too. I I will definitely say that so I do believe that Spargo is way better at re- recovering with Aegis than me. I feel I feel like I can learn a lot from his recoveries in general. But I still realize there are often times where he like he just has to take a certain route and then i can tell that you're getting in your head because like you missed those routes and you never you never ever miss them against me whenever we play because i can get no. mad it, happen, it happens against leo it doesn't happen against leo anymore but it happens against spargo like more often now too and i can definitely see how you are saying like you you're over you're overestimating him because you're like what if he finds a way to do something different maybe or you're just like in your head like second guessing like what's going on dude so it's funny you mentioned that because Towards the end of game 10, I don't know if you guys remember, there was this one interaction that happened before I died. So I, I like, he down tilted my shield, I grabbed him, and then I back threw him. And I was like, like in my head, I was like, he's gonna either 
switch or just try to back air me. So I'm going to go out there and back air him. But literally last second, I thought, nah, he's going to, he's not going to back air. He's going to double jump. So let me just homing attack. And that, and that's when I started charging homing attack. And he indeed switched and then side B with Mithra. If I had pause. gone for the back air. Wait, yeah. pause real quick. I just want to take five. So it doesn't fuck things up. Cosmos, can you possibly fix your audio real quick? Because people are starting to echo off your mic. Oh. This I didn't, yeah. All right. You can keep going. All right. <laughs> I was saying that. Uh, <laughs> so the side B. Um, Stop shaking your head, Phil. <laughs> I'm shaking it. <laughs> uh, so you went for the homing yeah. attack. I was listening. Yeah, exactly. So I went for the homing attack last second. But initially, I was going to go for the back air. And like, if I had gone for the back air there, like how I was, I was going to, it would have just died because... I, I knew then like again last second i second guessed myself and i thought nah 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 that was that's too obvious like i literally killed him in the same spot because he picked the same option i was expecting him to pick and i was like there's no way that in the last stock last situation of the set of the tournament he's gonna pick the same option again and then he did and then i died like an interaction later so you know it's little things like that that add up to me when i play him you just gotta chalk it up to him being scared of you at that point you know oh, yeah because when people usually when you see people making those repetitive options because they're like terrified of you in that scenario. So by that point, you have to play the I'm not going to adapt until they adapt play style or like mindset, you know. So like, yeah, yeah right. it's like just you're making too many calculations for someone who's just not thinking on the same wavelength as you, yeah. you know. I, yeah, I definitely get that. It's good that you realize what the adjustments are that you need to make, because I mean, you're obviously going to be fighting this guy a lot more in the future. It could yeah. be next weekend for all we know. Yeah. I definitely yeah. think uh, the Sonic Spargo uh, is the new rivalry of Smash. I think that is the uh, matchup that most people are anticipating and just kind of waiting to see. And it's it's interesting that you two have ascended to the point where you kind of expect it, whether it's online or offline. Like, that's how good you guys are. It's basically... Uh, you guys are part of the wave that's just ushered in just the new generation of Smash who's really holding it down along with the Cola uh, and along with Mia, you know what I'm saying, Zamba as well as in that conversation. It's crazy. And, you know, I had people when I was doing the watch party were like, yeah, like the old guards just kind of getting shuffled out a little bit like these new guns are just killing it i mean you got some people still holding on with like the buzz you know what i'm saying he's like 30 something so he's still holding on but you know obviously oh, light yeah. light is still there not this particular <laughs> tournament but light is still there when yeah, you I, huh, what i was just gonna say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie after i looked at that top eight i low-key got salty because i was like damn I have a winning record versus everyone in this top eight. I probably should have tried this sort of it. That's tough, brother. Put down the pina colada. I'm so sad. Uh, that was my fault, though. I mean, I got to take responsibility. But go on with your point. Yeah, I was going to say, when you look at like how this new crop of town is being so consistent, uh, who would you say, I want your opinion on this. When it comes to NA, okay, we got Tweak, we got Light, we got the Buzz, we got Zamba. In your opinion, who's the best NA player right now? Or the best American player, excuse me. Best American player? American player. Ooh. In my opinion? Yeah. Dude, that's hard. That's a hard question. I think that... I know. I think that North American or American? Four, American. Uh, oh, American. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. including Mexico. I'm not including Mexico. I think that those four could be the best, depending on, like, the day. Uh, but if I had to pick one, just based off of... Shit. Just <sighs> consistency? I think, at least as of late, probably Zomba. I think Zomba. Okay. I like that pick. Light, what do you think about that? I thought it's not me before you think I'm just going to throw myself there. Um, <laughs> I'm just I asking, think, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like it's in a weird spot right now because I would, I was going to say tweak, right? I was going to say tweak and me at number two, but of course each tournament does change things and tweak lost to two of NA. Like, I mean, two of America in this tournament he lost to the buzz. And he lost to Zamba, right? Yep. So I don't know. It's weird because it's it's just a weird like thing going on right now. Because I got a winning record on DeBuzz. I got a winning record on Zamba. I have lost a tweak the last couple times. But other than that, I just like shit on NA. I mean, I shit on America. And then Tweak usually does, but then he just didn't perform this tournament. And Zamba's been getting more consistent. I will say that. But I still wouldn't put him above me or Tweak. So I'd probably still say Tweak for now. I'm, I'm going to keep it at Tweak. Yeah. Okay. So you're locking in Tweak. Uh, okay. So you're locking in Tweak. Interesting. 
Interesting. You locked in Zamba. Cosmos, Zamba. who are you locking in? Um, I feel like currently I would have to say it's like a tie between the buzz and tweak because the buzz has been performing really well recently. And even when he doesn't really do that well, he gets like barely outside of top eight, like ninth or 13th. Like that's, that's like been as low recently. And that usually is still kind of scarce. And like, I'll, I'll give it up. Cause I was also the one saying that like, maybe, I don't know, maybe the buzz's characters got figured out, which is why he wasn't doing too well at um, rising grind. He didn't. Yeah. Do, you were wrong well there. Yeah. I was just wrong because Corrin <laughs> is definitely a character that destroys uh, Rosa and he did well uh, against Shattuck. And then he also beat Tweak, who was one of the best character, one of the best players in NA. Um, and he plays Sephiroth, what I think is a, at least a very decent character against um, the Buzz's character pools. So I just feel like the Buzz is one of the players that is able to figure out and just adapt with the meta, regardless of like how how many people come in, come and go, and just like he's he's he is a adapter and he studies a lot so the fact that he's able to study and like crack down on people's habits and like characters um characters limitations and ex- exploit them i feel like he's always going to be someone that's like at the top and very consistent and if we're going with consistency he's probably like the most consistent right now that i've seen at least from my knowledge because he got third and then he also did like very very well at smash now which is like one of the biggest tournaments so i have to give it to the buzz i'm giving it i want to give my opinion i'm giving it to the buzz his body of work over these last couple of months, immaculate. Yes, he struggles against Light. He struggles against Spargo. What I've noticed, is they don't necessarily always make it to him. Buzz's hey, consistency. <laughs> Listen, hey, you know I'm, you know you're my boy, okay? But I'm going to keep it all 100% real. I think the Buzz got it on lock right now. I'm saying. I think in terms of consistency, I'd probably still give it a Zombo because... People yeah. don't pay attention to the smaller events, like the B tiers and stuff. And Zampa goes to more events than any of us. And he do be outside. He be outside. And yeah, he he goes to more events than any of us. And he's like getting first place at like all these <laughs> events, you know. And, so, and why? But I've never really factored in the B tier tournaments. I'm just kind of factoring in like the major tournaments. Whenever I see people go into major tournaments, that's, you're not including Big House. No, like no, I'm not including me. Big House. The fuck? <laughs> that's, like, that's like dumb to me though. Like I don't understand why you wouldn't include like those tournaments where like top talents still there you know yeah like it's not easy for zombo to win a tournament over like me and the buzz you know like that I, matters. I i don't really like consider it because i the way i usually consider it is just how i value things it's like the bigger tournaments that everybody goes to that includes the four people that are like there too because usually at the bigger tournaments those four people are there as well so the people that place the best there are how it's like the easiest way to gauge who would be the best mm. out of those four people. Uh, a B tier nigga. What do you say? I think it varies. I said, I when was the last time you won a B tier nigga? I don't know the last time I've been to a B tier. <laughs> when was the last time you won anything? I don't know the last time I've been to anything. Stop, stop, please. You're doing this again. <laughs> Sonics, you were going to say something. I, I was going to say that I think it depends. Like, there's a lot of things. That go into doing well or bad at a tournament, like, like I can see why you you would think, oh, these four guys out of the same are the same tournament, so whoever does better at this tournament is the best. Like, no, that's that's yeah. let's not let's not do that because no. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's like it's saying like those tournaments collectively, not like okay, well, the last tournament, the buzz was better than all of them, so he did the best. But I mean, like collectively just those tournaments are the most important to me and have the most weight that's why i don't really care too much about b tiers because those people don't really go to the, that many tournaments and most people in general like top top players in general don't go to b tournaments b tier tournaments in general that's why i'm saying like the s tier tournaments are the tournaments that matter the most not the last one just s tier tournaments in general the reason i disagree with that so much is because times are changing and we actually just don't have nearly as many s tiers now and that's mainly because a lot of people in North America aren't going to shit. So I do think you need to value the tournaments where there are a couple of top players there because they're the ones who are willing to put themselves out there. Whereas all these other top players or you, for example, don't want to show up to tournaments where we can all be participating together and make these events bigger. I know, I'm going to be quiet. There you go. Yeah, let, that's a good idea. Let's. I'll, I'll soft transition off of that. I'll, I'll soft transition off of that. No, it's just true. It's just, bro. Like for example, CFL 
rewired and uh the invitation before cfl we had at cfl we had me the buzz zamba kurama we had players as good as louis money and chase we had other top players there as well if a few more top players showed up that would have been an a or an s tier because we had some of the best players in america to there at rewired we had one of the best players in north Am- no we had one of the best players in america there me you had the best player in mexico there and you had the best player in france the fact that these events are b tier isn't because oh like a couple of people are showing up because the best players of each person's respective continent is fucking there. If you just go to the events with these people, they will be bigger. There was ten, th- no, there was fifteen thousand dollars on the line, bro. Why were there not people there? Like at this point, it's not because it's not because the best aren't showing up. It's because like we're not showing up at the same places. Like it's not hard. See someone on a list and go to the event. Like what the fuck. As light, as light likes to say, <laughs> as light likes to say, it's your job. So get out there. It is your job. Get out there and be active. Um, you know, that brings up a good point. I'm glad I have uh you three here, because you obviously three player top perspective. There was a tournament that happened in Europe, and I saw a Sora won it, and he like destroyed Gluto. And I was thinking to myself, I'm I, I still say this game is far from unsolved. That's why I don't want Steve banned, because I say this game is far from unsolved, and there's plenty of characters that have so much potential to still be utilized and stuff like that. Uh Asura taking it over Gluto in a dominant fashion. I don't even remember what that tournament name was, but that Sora went crazy. Is Sora a hidden sleeper in this game? Or is just Gluto just bad against the character? No, I don't think Sora's a sleeper. I think everyone should know by now that the character is good because of Kamei. Mm-hmm. But I will say Gluto is one of the most likely players to get gimmicked. He's one of the best players in the world, but I think he's one of the most likely players to get gimmicked. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. I kind of feel, uh, feel the same way. I feel I feel like um I feel like one of the reasons I could be wrong. This is just kind of my perspective. I feel like one of the reasons why Gluto does well against like a lot of players because like those characters have been out for a very long time like not just like in this game but just throughout like smash's generation overall so i feel like the characters that have come out recently like um like pyramithra and like steve which is also a character that he struggles with like stories which i guess is also a character that he struggles with um i feel like those characters could give him more trouble because he's a character that like um he's a player he's a player that like takes a lot of information and takes a lot of information from like past sets and iterations and just like knowledge of how many times he's played the character in general. So I feel like Soros is something that he has, has to play more often and he'll just kind of figure it out eventually, just like Steve too. Okay. Yeah, I think that Sora is matchup check, honestly. Like Sora's the type of character you can lose to once or twice, but once you figure it out and you figure out how the character works and the fact that Nair is actually unsafe as hell, yep. you can just like... Eat his ass. Are you uh, still looking for your Kamehameha run back, or have you fought him again? I've not fought him again, so I, I would like to get my run back sometime. Yeah. yeah, that was a while ago too. Yeah, whole year, bro, whole he, year, dude. It's yeah. funny how you guys like. Will you guys? Do you guys have those matches that you hold on to? Like, I can't wait to get my my hands on this guy again. It just like kind of sticks with you. You're just annoyed that you lost to certain gyms. I hold on time. for I hold on for years. Same. Like, like, bro, did you not see? When uh, I was at Circuit of CFL, like I was talking about a redemption bracket. One of the people in that redemption bracket was Jake. Jake beat me in 2021. Like I hold on to these losses, bro. Like I make a mental note. And sometimes I love thinking about how I lost to people because I know the next time I fight them or if I see them on my bracket pass path, there's no nerves. There's just like anger. <laughs> like there's no way I'm going to lose. So yeah, I do. Okay, I guess that's a common thing. Well, a lot of runbacks might be happening in a few weeks. Court priority, guys. This event is looking like it's going to be the most stacked event of the year. I'm just going to say it. Um, and I say it. Some people argue Genesis. Everyone's better since then. Everybody who's on that like upper echelon has gotten better since then. That's why I think. And their Japanese more- player is going to. Yeah, there's a whole slew of it's it's you know it, it's a whole slew of Japanese players coming through, which I love. I think that's going to be awesome. Are you guys going to defend this American turf? I'm including you, Sonics, because you're in America right now, okay? Well, you're Honorary North NA. America anyway. Huh? He's North America anyway. No, yeah. he's, he's Puerto Rico. What? What? Is that North America? Puerto Rico. Let's get something out the way. Puerto Rico is still North America. I'm not Puerto Rico. I'm not Puerto Rico. No. 
Have you never heard us talk about? Oh this? shit! You're Dominican. My bad. Oh yeah, yeah. Bro, Dr. Bro, that's why bro. I say Sonic is my natural enemy, bro. <laughs> Wait, is Dr. North America? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Puerto Rico and Dr. are both North America. All right, boys. Are we gonna defend North America? Talk to me. <laughs> Let's get something out the real real quick. The guy on the bottom left, Puerto Rican. The guy on the bottom right, Dominican. The top two. Black. Okay. <laughs> Understood. I'm writing that down right now. Uh, <laughs> right, right, Gonna right, make a little right, chart. Right, um, right, I think right. so. Before we actually lead into this, this is something I want to talk to Sonics about, which we touched up a little bit on it when I don't know if we did it over messages or if we did it at um Miami. You think NA is better overall or like adapts better than Japan? Adapts better? Yeah. Uh I think that Japan's better overall. Yeah. Uh, just because of like the concentration of talent over there is a lot better than in NA. Yeah. And they adapt better though. Huh. I don't I wanna, think they adapt better. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. So the thing about Japanese players is I'm sure you guys have seen the infamous Leo tweet where he goes, Japanese players and their thanks for trying to play the game characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love so that the thing tweet. I've noticed, same. The thing I've noticed from them is that they're really good because they have like a really solid base game plan. Yep. So they're so think of them as like hidden boss, like bosses, right? Like final bosses in video games. So they're really good because you know they have a really fucking strong uh, base game plan. But once you figure that game plan out, like it, it's hard for them to adapt. I've said uh, this so many times. I love mm, that you're yeah. saying this right now. And no, no, don't get me wrong. Like they're still like amazing players. They're all mm -hmm. really good, and they do eventually like evolve certain things about their game plan. But at least at a base level, like that's what they're gonna do. Like it's not like they're gonna like, for example, like let's say let's I'm using myself as an, as an example. Like sometimes I'll camp, sometimes I'll go in. Uh, you know, like for example, they will just camp. They will just go in. They will, you know, and they don't really have that versatility that a lot of NA players have. I feel. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that, and it's honestly why I feel like if we did somehow have the scenario where like they lived in America for a couple months, I really do think the entire like like who's the best would change because I do think the adaption here is incredible. Obviously, they are very good players, but I think adaption is such an important thing in this game. Like mid set adaption, some people take sets to adapt because they study, but I mean the top players of this game, like me, you, like Spargo, were able to like adapt within stocks or like scenarios you know and that's like very powerful so it's just like it's it's something that's exploitable from them and i think a call is a good example of that because you know the whole meme where like you know he does side b and he jumps and he does down air into like back air right and yeah. it's like oh this is fucking like stupid it's like how do you deal with it that's a very good example of oh he's coming in with a very solid game plan and it's very broken yeah but if you can get past it he most likely will not change it. Like he's not going to stop doing it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I get exactly what you mean. Are yeah, you? I just, sorry, what? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. I was going to say, I feel like they're the type of players that they will pick the best option in every situation. And if you're uh, knowledgeable enough in, a, in whatever matchup you're up against and you know, oh, okay. Like for example, for Steve, right? Like minecart, anvil, back here to cover your hurt box. Like that's the best option. If you know how to deal with it, gonna keep doing it every time so that's yep. like a free hit every time yeah uh, and i mean you can tell because spargo every time he plays akala it is not close and he punishes the same habits over and over and over and so yeah i think that's that's a good example i do think like i agree with you i think that if either na players traveled more to japan or they came here more i guess i think that the it, it would show the difference in adaption would show like very clearly. Do you do you to put a bow on this? I know Sonics, you've got to be one of the favorites to actually win uh port priority going into it at this point. There's no doubt about it. Your resume speaks for itself. You versus Cola. Is there a world where you think, okay, maybe you handle the Steve so well he actually tries Aegis on you, just given the success Spargo has here and there? How how do you think a set with a cola is gonna go? Oh, so funnily enough, I played him at SmashCon. I played mm -hmm. friendlies with him. And uh, we did two sets. We did a set with Steve. Uh, he actually won. It was like a best of three. You know, the Switch was set like that. He actually won to one. And uh, now that being said, I did get fucking, you know, Steve cheesed. I wasn't really camping because it's like friendlies. Sure. And I also SD'd. So 
And then he went Aegis, and his Aegis, like, it was not close. Like, I 2 owed him. It was not close. But I did hear him say, according uh, this is according to people in my Twitch chat, I'm not sure if this is true. But I Twitch uh, chat never lies. That, yeah, never. they never lie, bro. But <laughs> they said that he said that he was going to try the Aegis if the Steve didn't work. Mm. So I'm expecting him to go Steve if the game's not close, which... I'm gonna try my damn hardest to make it not close. I think he's gonna switch for sure. Make that switch out, yeah, and then make it even not closer. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. That, that you're not thinking hard enough. You bait the switch out, and then you make the second game go really close, so he stays ages. So then in the third game, you wash him. <laughs> yeah. It's a good strat. Look yeah, at that. Look at North America working together to stop Japan. I think that is why we're gonna have an amazing, amazing time at Port. And Sonics too. Shouts to you for qualifying for Watch the Throne as well. Uh, just a lot of good stuff happened to you over this past weekend, and we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to be on the podcast, man. Always want to get the perspective uh, of a top player, especially one who's rising as fast as you, my guy. Uh, expecting nothing but bigger and better things, and uh, we appreciate your time. I yeah, know, of course. Uh, thank you guys for having me, and uh, shout outs to you, of course, because I mean, yeah, the rise has been fast, but. A little, it was a little slow, and you kind of you helped push that rise with uh, Shine back then. So for those You're of my you boy. who don't know, yeah, AE actually flew me out to Shine. Uh, Cosmos is so salty right now. 2017, that's oh. what it is, baby. I've been supporting yeah. Sonic since day one. Oh, man. We're going to kick it in the DR sometime, bro. It's going to be lit. Got to pull up some time, bro. I'm going to be there. Appreciate you coming through, Sonics. Take care. I'm going to keep dodging you, bro. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Peace. 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 All right. And there you have it. Another fantastic guest for Lights Out. Shout out to Sonics. Really opened up a lot to us and shed a lot, a lot of light on uh, some different things. Getting his perspective was dope as well. Um, yeah. But great episode. Uh, light. I will be expecting a much better performance from you at Port Priority. Cosmos, win the bet. It ends. It ends <laughs> at Port. It's over. That's it does not end that port. It ends at port. Not. It's over. It's not end that port. Okay. Bro, giving you so many chances. Port. All right. It's all to right, be continued. Bro. The bet is to be continued. <laughs> bro, I will say. <laughs> the like bet said, does end that port because I get top eight. You're right. Bam. Like, Love it. Like I said, I'm not really worried about like doing bad, like doing good or bad. I've been playing this game a shit ton lately. And lo- trust me when I say it, Miami was not a reflection of my results. I'm looking forward to it. What I will say, uh-huh. though, is I heard that hurt is in my bracket. So if you guys do know where I could find one of, the, one of those speaker splitter things to bring to the tournament, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> I, can, I can bring a literal speaker for you. No, 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 no. I want to get my own. I need this to be like a long Holy thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I, I want I want one of those ones that like is a speaker and a splitter. Like you could like make it both. I don't know what those are called, but if you could help me find one of those, that'd be nice. Cause I'm going to buy it on Amazon like today, if I can. Collectively, we will figure that out. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, this was a great episode, man. Episode uh, 33, couple updates for you. MK Leo did say he'll be available next week for the podcast. So we'll put, put his feet to the fire and hopefully he'll show up for that. Sonics was a great guest. And then I talked to Cola as well. Cola said he'll be available again in early 2024. Nigga, you ain't that busy. We are gonna go ahead and handle that at Port Priority. We'll get we'll get Cole try to get Cole on before the end of the year. I don't know what that's about. That's insane. Yep. So and watch out, watch out for the Patreon because we're gonna be starting that soon too. A hundred percent. Patreon is gonna be full of a lot of bonus content. A lot of it's gonna be from tournaments too. Behind the scenes look that you guys don't get to traditionally see. We got a lot of clever, creative ideas, and we just want to say uh, thank you all for sticking with us and rocking with us as hard as you have because it has been a hell of a journey. Any parting words? Are we good? I hate you. I hate you too. All right. That's it. All right. Well, I didn't realize my ex was in the call. <laughs> nah, we're fine. Hey, that was that's, the case. <laughs> that's gonna do it for lights out. We'll catch you on the next one, everybody. Peace. Oh, like, comment, subscribe. You know the vibes. You know the slogan. Come on, come on. <laughs>